Today I am in Lafayette, Louisiana, and my first impression of the area is it seems a little bit dodgy, but I tried to pick an area that seems like it's pretty average for, you know, America. Seems like the houses in this neighborhood go for around the 300, 350K mark, although I did see areas that were cheaper, but didn't look so good, let me tell you. Uh, you can even get like a little shack around here for 40, 50 K. That's like 700 square feet, but not in a good area to say the least. But anyways, we'll take a walk through this neighborhood. I did see at least one or two houses for rent and for sale around here. So let's see if we can find them. You know, one thing that I kept seeing earlier this year was how all the economists and all the real estate experts were predicting that by the end of this year, we're gonna have interest rates that are at or below 5% again. Okay, well, now they're starting to change their tune on that, just like they've changed their tune on so many other things because it ends up being that that's probably not gonna happen. Right now, interest rates are still hovering around the 7% mark for the average borrower. The problem is everybody has gotten used to low interest rates, right? People have gotten used to rates being well below 5%. In fact, between 2011 and 2022, interest rates for the 30-year mortgage were consistently below 5% during that time frame. Right now, home buyers are starting to have to accept that, hey, uh, interest rates are probably not gonna be coming down anytime soon. So of course, the standard advice from real estate agents and mortgage brokers now is, well, you should definitely buy something now then because if you're, not, if you're not gonna have interest rates come down anytime soon, it's foolish to wait for them to come down. Which I agree, it is foolish to wait for interest rates to come down, but it might not be so foolish to wait for prices to come down. But hey, that's just my opinion. That's the number one thing I would be looking for if I were a buyer right now, is when are prices going to come down? Is that likely to happen in the area that I live in? Looks like you got a totally abandoned house here. So now Fannie Mae and the National Association of Realtors is changing their forecast to say that, well, now we think interest rates will start declining in the first quarter of 2024. No longer do we think it's gonna happen in 2023. But I'm willing to bet that it's probably not gonna happen then either because when you look at what the Fed is saying they're gonna do right now, it doesn't seem like interest rates are gonna be coming down anytime soon. If they're planning on keeping rates high for a long period of time, then it's probably going to remain high well into 2024 is my guess. And by the way, when they say that they think interest rates are going to come down, they're saying that they think interest rates will come down to 6%. That's low interest rates now. <laughs> Here we have a pretty nice house in Lafayette at 320,000. It's a three bed, three bath, about 2,500 square feet. And they just listed this place less than a month ago. So it's a pretty fresh listing still. They bought it back in 2014 for $214,000. So they'll make a decent chunk of change when they sell this house. But man, you get a lot more for your money here in Louisiana than you do in Florida. That is for sure. So you got some of these experts saying that we're gonna end 2023 with interest rates below 6%. Other ones are saying it's gonna be above 6%. I'm definitely in the camp that thinks that interest rates will end the year well above 6%, probably pretty close to where we're at right now. I don't really see interest rates coming down at all throughout the rest of the year, especially if we get another rate hike later on this month and possibly another one after that. I think interest rates could actually end up even higher than they are right now by the end of the year. So people who are thinking that, you know, interest rates are magically going to come down to that 5% range or maybe even less anytime soon are dreaming right now. This house has a for rent sign in the yard, but kind of like the house in the villages, there's no record of it actually being for rent or for sale anywhere. Not on the MLS or for sale by owner or for rent by owner on Zillow, nothing. So we have no idea how much they're asking, but the rent's estimate on Zillow says it's $1,500 a month, but also their for sales estimate says it's 154,000, which is quite a bit less than their neighbor down the street is asking. So it's probably wrong. But the one thing I hate and the one thing I really can't stand is you see this advice over and over again 
from all these big real estate companies and experts that keep giving the same advice saying, well, don't hesitate to buy now because even if you buy now at a higher interest rate and rates do come down, then don't worry, you can always refinance later. And that is just a huge lie, guys. That is not true unless you have the equity that allows you to be able to refinance. That's the part of the story that they never tell you. And that's a big deal because most buyers don't put more than 10 or 12% down when they buy a house. So that means if your house drops by that much or more in value, refinancing is completely out of the question. And even if it doesn't drop and you only have 10% or 12% equity, the first couple of years of your mortgage payment, almost all of it is going towards interest payments rather than the principal. And you're not gonna be gaining a whole lot of equity in the first few years of ownership. So being able to refinance might still not be possible for some people if you don't put a significant down payment down on the property. But one thing I do agree with these experts who are consistently wrong about everything on is they say that the number one thing that we need to pay attention to right now that's gonna gauge where everything goes is inflation. And we're paying attention to inflation on this channel and the most recent inflation numbers showed us that inflation actually went up okay it went up in june and didn't go down it didn't go up by a lot but it didn't go down this is the thing that we need to look at and the jobs numbers just came out far higher than what was predicted and you know those are two things that the fed is looking at right now and is using to gauge whether or not they should continue hiking interest rates or not to think that interest rates are likely to come down within the near future is a complete pipe dream and I think that we're gonna see high interest rates at least through the end of 2024 if things keep going like this. The big question on my mind and probably a lot of yours is, is these sustained high interest rates going to be enough to actually crash the economy and crash the housing market to make things affordable again? And the answer is, I don't know guys. Just like I don't know when I talked about yesterday's video in the recession, nobody knows if it's going to be enough nobody knows if the government is going to print more money or the fed will go back to qe policies if things start getting weird again and so far we've been able to handle these high interest rates now for about a year the economy hasn't come crashing down just yet however one thing you always have to keep in mind is that the interest rate hikes take time to take its full effect right so we're only feeling now the interest rate hikes that were done a year ago so how are things going to be in a year from now after we're starting to feel the interest rate hikes that are happening today? Well, we'll find out in a year from now. That's why nobody can really say what's gonna happen and exactly when. But one thing we can all agree on at the moment is 3% mortgage rates for 30 year fixed loans are not coming back anytime soon. So if you're hanging on and waiting to buy a house because of that, don't do it guys, because nobody knows when that's gonna happen. But if you've been studying the trends of your market and you see that prices are down year over year, even right now in what's supposed to be the hot selling season of the housing market, then it might make sense to hang on for lower prices because chances are once summer is over, the prices are gonna start going down again because that is a seasonal pattern that we see in real estate. And say, if prices drop another 10% where you live, that will save you money. And Obviously, you won't get a lower interest rate, but you would have saved money on the purchase price, which is always the best thing if you ask me. But here's something else to look at and keep in mind when you're talking about interest rates is that the median 30-year interest rate for a mortgage over the past 30 years is 5.77%. So we're actually closer now to the 30-year mean average of the 30-year rate than we were during this ultra low suppressed period where interest rates were you know three percent so that's why it's very unlikely that we'll see times like that maybe never again in our lifetimes i'm not saying it's impossible but don't hold your breath this doesn't just apply to buyers either because we know that one of the main reasons that we don't have a lot of inventory on the housing market is because home sellers are also waiting for rates to come down so they can list their house and be guaranteed they can buy another one and get a good rate on it. No one wants to give up the 3% rate for a 7% rate or a 6% rate, which makes sense. 
But that's why this same advice applies to you as a seller. If you're waiting for rates to come back down to where it was during the pandemic, it's not gonna happen. So if you've been thinking about selling, you might as well just get it over with. And by the way, if anybody does need a buyer's agent or a seller's agent, a realtor across the entire 50 states, I have a free service available to all of my viewers. All you have to do is use the link in the description below. Tell us where you're going to be moving to or where you want to sell a home from. And I will get you set up with a real estate agent that has a lot of experience in your market and it's completely free and it really helps out the channel. And while you're at it, if you're enjoying this video, you might as well subscribe to the channel and give this video a like because it helps out tremendously. Now here's something insane. Thanks Steve for sending me this story. One thing that makes no sense right now about how the economy is supposedly doing so well and how the housing market is still doing so well is this. More than 105 million working age Americans do not have a job right now. Well, the entire population of the country is something around 340 million people. That's a third of all the people that live here are not working, guys. But somehow things are managing to stay afloat on the backs of the other two thirds of the people. Sounds pretty insane. And you know, we, we keep getting told how great the unemployment situation is right now. And the job numbers keep smashing their expectations, you know, just basically breaking records month after month of the amount of jobs that are coming out. But yet we have 100 million people that are without work right now, which sounds pretty suspicious and doesn't really make a lot of sense. The government actually classifies people who don't have a job into two different categories. The BLS says you're either unemployed or you're not in the labor force. And to be classified as unemployed, then people must actively be looking for work. And if they're not actively looking for work, they're classified as not in the labor force. So basically it sounds like you're either voluntarily unemployed or involuntarily unemployed, they should probably call it. And now that we know the difference between basically unemployed and not looking for work, check out these stats. Right now, there's about 6.1 million Americans who are working age that are considered unemployed. So they're looking for work, right? But there's another 99.8 million that are considered to be not in the labor force. So what are those people doing? That's what I would like to know. Like, <laughs> if they're not looking for work, then what are they doing? How are they making money? How are they getting by and surviving and paying for this record cost of our lifestyles today? Let me know, tell me how. And that's how we arrive at this number of getting basically 105 million Americans that are not working or unemployed. And to just put into perspective how insane this is, during the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009, the number of people that were not looking for work or not in the labor force or whatever you want to call it, unemployed, didn't even get up to 90 million. So these numbers that we have right now have surpassed what we saw during the Great Recession, but yet somehow things are still floating higher than ever. And that's why I just have no faith and this economy continuing to stay as strong as it is because something is going on that doesn't make any sense. And when it breaks, it's going to come down hard. That's what I keep thinking is going to happen. In my view, there's just too many things that are stacked against us right now. And there's plenty of stories of people that lost their job and would like to get a different job and have been looking for work and have been doing all sorts of things to get a new job and they're literally filling out hundreds of applications. In fact, I remember one of my viewers, Kathleen, went through this several months ago. She was out of work for about two months and had to fill out a couple hundred job applications before she was able to actually land one. But yet the labor market is so good right now and we're adding hundreds of thousands of jobs every single month. I don't know. Do you believe that? I'll tell you one thing. I stopped and got a blizzard at Dairy Queen yesterday off the road and I know that they're hiring. They have a picture in the window saying that they're hiring just like pretty much every other restaurant and store has in the window. But I realize that most people don't want those type of jobs. That's, that's mainly the problem I think is that there are jobs out there but those jobs that are out there are just not enough to get by. I mean I don't know how these people working at Dairy Queen can make a living. Maybe they have to work two or three jobs like that one in order to actually pay their bills. But probably half of them are also teenagers that live in their parents' basement still and 
can afford to work at Dairy Queen, essentially. Now, one other thing I've been meaning to share with you guys, and I keep forgetting to tell you, is that if you ever drive through Florida, guys, try to avoid taking the Florida Turnpike because it will empty your wallet. In fact, when I left Miami, I made it all the way up to the villages and got off the turnpike before I even made it to the villages. And just going from Miami up to near the Orlando area, it cost me almost $19 in tolls in just one day. <laughs> and I counted how many charges I had and how many tolls there were. And at one point it seemed like there was a toll every couple of miles. And it came to the point, I counted 16 tolls that I had to pay between Miami and Orlando and totaling about 19 bucks. So heads up if you're ever driving through Florida, it's not cheap to drive on the turnpike. Now one last thing I want to cover is Redfin recently released a report and they love touting how good the housing market is and pointing to anything that they can to make it look like things are going great. And the latest thing is that the average sale to list price ratio hit 100.1% in the last four weeks and what this comes down to is about 38 percent of homes during this time period sold for more than their asking price and redfin is talking about how this means that the housing market is in full recovery mode right now because of this and the other thing that they say in their report is they found little year-to-year -year drop in price with the median home sale price down only 0.3 percent about a thousand dollars from one year ago and home prices are now back to near record highs. But only part of that story is true. And we know that the main reason for all of this is because inventory is just too low and there hasn't been enough new listings hitting the market to really make a splash and make a difference. And whenever you have a premium property that a lot of people want, naturally it's probably gonna sell for more than what they're asking. That's what's happening in some of these areas. But when you look at their website, this is what you'll actually see as of right now when I'm filming this, Friday, July 7th. But the current median home price is $418,000 and it actually says it's down 3.3% year over year. And these, this is as of May 2023. I'm assuming that the June numbers are gonna come out any day now. But the funny thing is they only ever mention the year over year price declines or price increases, right? They never show how much prices came down in such a short period of time. Because if you look at this same graph from Redfin, in May 2022, the median home price was $432,000, right? But then if you fast forward to January 2023, just seven months later, it went all the way down to $382,000 in seven months. That's a $50,000 drop for anyone who's counting, and that equates to an 11.5% decline in prices in only seven and a half months, guys. So whenever they come out with these stories, it, they're not really telling you the full picture. Have, have things recovered since then? Yes, they have but they're not acknowledging how quickly home prices came down during that time frame, and the fact that we are now at the end of the summer selling season and are likely to see home prices dip even further within the coming months. My guess, if I'm looking at this chart right now, that June is gonna show home prices going up just a little bit more, but then when the July figures come in, that's when you're gonna start seeing it coming down again and it will continue to go down throughout the rest of the year. And they're also saying how the home buyer demand index, which is a proprietary data point that they have that re measures the request for home tours and other buying services from Redfin agents is up 4% month to month and it's at its highest level in about a year. Well, yeah, no kidding it is because this is the time of year when everybody's out buying. So it's like not really a big surprise that this is the case, but yet, they make it out to sound like it's a big deal and everything is going back to normal, guys. So you believe what you want when you hear those things, but I've been making these videos and watching this data long enough to know that this is all temporary. But of course, Redfin is in the business of selling homes, just like the National Association of Realtors and everybody else. And they want you to believe that this is the massive recovery that everyone's been talking about and it's all gonna go to the moon from here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the bell notification down below. YouTube will alert you every time I post a new video. And if you don't wanna wait, check out my next one on the screen right over here and I'll see you in the next one.